I would like to call the first panelist. Um, in person of Professor Gloria Chukudebe. She is the Director of Public Procurement Research Center, Federal University of Technology, Owori. Also, she has a PhD in Electronic and Engineering from Newcastle University, UK. I triple the Africa Area Chair. Also, um, past chair, IEEE Nigerian section, fellow Nigerian Society of Engineers, and fellow Nigeria Computer Society, past chair, Appen OOE chapter, past HOD, Electrical and Electronic Engineering, past director, ICT Center Photo, chairman, Green Village Electricity Project Limited. Over 32 years industry academia experience. Research interests include social media applications, cyber security, and sustainable energy system. Enjoys reading, volunteering, mentoring young people, watching Nigerian comedies, and local soap operas. Please put your hands together for Professor Gloria. When I first read I profile, I just told myself that this is a picture of me in the next 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I was inspired. <laughs> okay, I'd like to call the second panelist. Okay, Miss Patience and our Um, yeah, <laughs> okay. BENG Electrical and Electronics Engineering, University of, of Benin, Nigeria, MSc Engineering Business Management, University of Warwick, UK, Pace Management Innovation and Technology, MIT, USA, MST Sustainability Leadership, University of Cambridge, UK, Arrows, to the Turbo Machinery Instrumentation and Electrical Specialist, ExxonMobil, Nigeria. She's the coordinator of Southwest IEEE WE Nigeria, founder and motivational speaker, patient, and our belief foundation. Please put your hands together for her again. Okay, truth be told, when I first read her profile, so I was expecting to see someone be then she walked in, I'm like, why is she looking so young? <laughs> but this is, it's highly commendable, you know, to have achieved all this. The 12th panelist, please. Um, her name is Lebogang Murdes. She's a graduate of Microsoft Student to Business Program, the App Factory Program. She then moved to facilitate a Scrum Master at MLab Southern Africa in Cape Town. Our role at MLab has evolved, which led to a title change to that of the Provincial Manager for Western Cape. Um, she, went, okay, she went for volunteering at her local student branch to serving on the Region 8 Committee from 2014 to 2016 as a student branch coordinator for student branches in over 56 countries across Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and served as a committee member for IEEE Region 8 sites. In 2017, she was appointed as the student branch chapter coordinator Humanitarian Activities and Women in Engineering Subcommittee members. However, she had to resign from the chapter coordinator role to concentrate on the latter commitment and, um, and extend the opportunity to another volunteer. Locally in South Africa, she's part of the organizing committee for the upcoming IEEE African Congress and an advocate for women in STEC. Please once again put your hands together for Level Gang Maddox. 
I hope I'm pronouncing your name the, the right way. Neville. Neville Kang. Okay, I'll learn that. Thank you. Um, who is the first panelist? Um, okay, our first panelist is Hamina Batagarawa, PhD. She's a lecturer from Amadou Bello University, Zaria, Bates University, Abuja. Okay. Oh, I think MSc Architecture Ongoing, PhD Architecture. MSc Environmental Design, BSc Architecture. She's the head research support services, Sustainable Energy Association of Nigeria, staff representative of Green Campus Initiative, member Energy Institute. Please make welcome Hamina Batagawa. Um, so we will not be able to project a profile, but I have it with me, so I'm going to read it out to you people. Um, the fifth person is our chair in person of um, Chidima Ijeoma Ibe Dewobi. She's an active high triple E volunteer since 2006 and has been serving several volunteer membership and leadership positions. She graduated from the University of Port Harcourt, Rivers, Nigeria. She, she has been involved in managing several projects. Since her elevation to general manager of business development in 2008, she has been involved in activities which surpass the developing and implementing of growth opportunities within an organization. Her primary duty in the office is engineering management and she has done quite a good job at transforming our company. Um, Flornex Limited, our company Flornex Limited to an elevated position in the oil and gas engineering. She was honored with Flornex Outstanding Staff Award in 2007 and long service recognition in December 2013. She's a senior member of High Triple E, and has served several volunteer activities, including three terms, High Triple E Nigeria Session Treasurer, the Nigerian 2013 Committee Member, and ICAS Committee Member. Our current service includes its 2017 Chair, we, we is Women in Engineering, High Triple E Nigeria Section, and a member of the Committee of Nigerian 2017. She was one of the Nigerian delegates to the 2012 High Triple E and Student Branch and Gold Congress in Madrid, Spain. She was, she was honored with High Triple E Nigerian Section Leadership. High Triple E Nigerian Section Leadership 2016 to 2010, and also High Triple E Nigerian Section Leadership 2011 to 2013. Apart from High Triple E and We, she belongs to the following professional organization. Nigeria Society of Engineers, Nigeria Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, Institute Engineering and Technology, Society of Women Engineers, Association of Professional Women Engineers of Nigeria, Women Engineers and Scientists, and Koren Registered. Please make welcome Madam Chidima Ijeoma. Okay. Um, we're about to start the section, and I will pass the microphone to Professor Gloria. To Professor Gloria, to give a little intro um, to the topic we are yet to discuss, which is African women challenges and successes. Thank you very much, Tony uh, Madrito. You've done a wonderful job introducing us. 
good, good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, IEEE members, senior members, Region 8 director, first director, all protocols observed. I want to first of all thank the organizers of this com congress for giving me this opportunity. Please thank you very much. We, our topic is Women in Africa, Challenges and Successes. So I want to use this opportunity to say that women in Africa, we are the move. Africa is diverse. North Africa is advanced more than Sub-Saharan Africa. South Africa is also more advanced, more than Sub-Saharan Africa. But for Sub-Saharan Africa, where you have West Africa and East Africa, um, my mother, my grandmother, and it's similar to most of us in this panel, uh, did not have the opportunity of going to school. So they didn't have the opportunity of working. Life was really difficult for them. But all that have changed for our generation. Thanks to one proverb that was made popular by a Ghanaian. Train a male child and you educate an individual. Train a female child and you train a nation. So Africa adopted that and they started sending their girls to school. So consequently today, you have a lot of African women in the sub-Saharan going to school, working as mothers. We have pilots, we have doctors, we have judges. Uh, we even have an African president in Liberia. So all that is very good. But Africa is still, they still have a lot of challenges, armed conflict, access to internet, access to electricity, good housing, transportation. So one question is, do we have enough women in top management positions and in STEM, that's science, technology, engineering, and, man uh, and mathematics, to be able to make the required changes to tackle these challenges Africa is facing. That's one question you have to have in your mind. And during the discussion, you can throw questions or uh, bring up ideas. Uh, I did a study with some young women, uh, like, like last year. We found that in most organizations, you have less than 7% of women in top management positions. So it's, there's still a gap we need to fill. So for this panel, what we're going to do is to share our personal stories, the challenges we face at work, and how we have managed to overcome some of the challenges, and how belonging to IEEE and we have helped us to overcome those challenges. So can I start with myself? Okay, so very briefly, my personal story, the challenges I have faced, and there are some of the few achievements I have made. My challenges are in the area of mentoring, surviving office politics, and then work-life balance. I'll start with mentoring. When I was in the undergraduate uh, college, I was the only girl in uh, my class. Although I had some other females in higher classes, we didn't have a female lecturer, so I didn't have a mentor. So life was really hard for me. We didn't have this uh, luxury of having a separate toilet, but subsequently that has changed. Now, what I, I have been doing since I got matured, I started working is to mentor as many girls I come across as possible. Then on surviving office politics. OK, that's a long one. So let me talk about work-life balance. 
as an undergraduate, it was easier to manage. I could decide to sleep for 30 minutes, go play badminton, and then go to the library. So that was easier. Then luckily, when I got married, my husband used to play badminton for the university. So as a, a family, we could go out after work to play with the children. So that was OK. But as I now rose in the profession, work-life balance became a myth because I had a lot to do. I had to do my lecturing. I had to supervise students. I had to do some other things for the university. So when I close at work, I will have to sign on to the second shift of looking after the family and also doing some of the work I carried home and also taking care of the children and taking care of the husband. And that's one of the things African women do very well. Please give us a round of applause. We don't joke with taking care of children and husbands. We don't joke with that. Because that's the foundation of development. OK, so that's about work-life balance. On surviving office politics, after this session, my ambition is that all the girls who are, and all the young men who are listening, they will be winning in office politics. Office politics is about how power is uh, organized in, uh, in an office. It involves uh, people who go and uh, gossip and then go and give presents to get undue advantage. There are good aspects, there are other negative aspects. So for me, when I was head of department, I, didn't, uh, I just focused on my work. Also, I didn't have the opportunity of going to joint in Europe, they call it pub. I discovered that the female, my female colleagues, after work, they go to the joint first. And that's where they share critical information about work and then other things. So I was missing out from that. Consequently, I was 10 years as lecturer one before I got promotion. I didn't know the requirements. But when I was HOD, I was six years as HOD working, producing the best students, and I didn't get promotion until I finished. So these are some of the bad you know, things that affect women. Because normally, the women don't go to the gym to share the information. No. As I went to ICT, I had already started a path, and I followed that path making my team work very hard, achieve uh, management targets, and we didn't pay office politics. We were not even selling the best things, you know, showcasing what we were doing. I have learned, but I don't want people before me to suffer what I suffered. But what are my successes? My successes are that I moved the department from analog, using analog processes to digital. And we became the best organized department in the university. <laughs> Other departments started emulating electrical and electronic engineering departments. The first chancellor then decided to buy computers for all the other departments and give them computer operators. That's one of my achievements. And that history of being the best department is still being maintained by my successors. So thank you so much. Another one is that on mentoring, I have mentored a lot of girls that in my department now, we have seven female lecturers. So they have somebody to look up to. And they form like 18% of the staff strength. I also mentor the men. The men I have mentored in the department are 60% of the staff strength. So these are some of the successes. Wow. wow. So it thank you very much. Good achievement. Thank you so much, Ma. Um, I think, please, can you share? some of your challenges and successes also in the work. I think it's skills. a tough call to follow right after that. It's <laughs> almost unfair. <laughs> OK, um, my experience is like half of yours, so I guess I can try. 
um, where she, she did very well saying, you know, I walked in and she was like, why did she look that young? You have to come to me for the secret. <laughs> I have 15 years of experience in oil and gas sector. Wow. Um, I started working in 2002 with ExxonMobil. I'm still with the same organization. And then to go straight to the issue of challenges, I would say for me, challenges um, being in a STEM career started not just at the workplace, but from being a student. Um, you know, I, I fell in love with physics at about 14, and I decided, you know what, I want to be an engineer. And um, from the moment I said I wanted to be an engineer, people kept discouraging me. I had a super supportive family, um, but outside of my family, it was all negative. People would say, are you sure you can pass physics? Uh, physics, men, girls are not really good in physics. And I'm like, what is that? You know, um, I went on to have a, a physics in my um, work. You know, I'm moving on. Even when I was doing electrical engineering, it was still the same thing. People would always underestimate you for no other reason than the fact that you're female. You know, and that in itself was challenging because where people should be propelling you forward and saying, go for it, go for it, they're actually questioning your aspirations. And one of the funny things I, I heard back then when I said, oh, I'm going to study electrical is, do you want to start climbing the poles like NEPA officials? <laughs> should look for a feminine job. You know, and, and I think that's one of the challenges we still face in this part of the world, that there are still very strong stereotypes. And once a lady comes out to say, I'm going for engineering, it's more negative than positive. Um, getting to the workplace, it wasn't any different, but um, I went in prepared. <laughs> um, because you could already tell when you're studying engineering that you're going to be a minority in the workplace. And the schools are even so much better than the workplace. Because um, at least in Unibon back in the days, electrical was almost 50-50 male, female. Um, mechanical was a lot less. But getting to the workplace, I ended up the, the only female in the electrical department at QIT, ExxonMobil, where I joined. Um, and so I already knew the odds were against me, uh, but I went in prepared. So one of the stories I'll share was like my first day at work. My first day at work, I was taken to my supervisor and um, it was like, well, we're going to give you a tour of the different units in this department. And the first question I asked him is, I hope we don't discriminate against women, like going offshores. And that took him aback because it was like, no, we need to do anything. Um, and that helped me a lot because he became very supportive. He saw me as someone who wanted to work. So he gave me all the opportunities. I went offshore immediately. OK, go do this, go do that. I, I was dropped at the deep end of the pool. Just go find a way. In less than um, one year of being in my department, I, I used to get sent out. I don't know how many of you know Bonnie River Terminal, BRT, belonging to ExxonMobil. BRT had a shutdown in 2003, blackout. I was sent out to help restart BRT. Less than one year. Those are the kind of responsibility I was having. And, you know, the blessed thing for me in my first few years was that I had fantastic bosses. All of my bosses were super supportive and they were all men. So I want to encourage all of you that are men here that you could make a big difference. The challenges I faced were with the locations I went to because my department supported different facilities. So I show up in the location and I'm like, I, well, I'm here from the turbo machinery unit to solve a problem for you. And they're like, what? The city is a deep? We have serious problem here. And mentally, that's, that's a real you know, setback. And oftentimes, they don't believe in you. So you're, you're working on something. You have all the plant superintendents, all the field engineers standing right across your shoulder as if they want to confirm you know what you're doing. That was a major challenge for me because it meant I had to work twice as much as a guy to prove that I was good. But in no time at all, two, three years into the job, everybody knew patience is a high performer. I mean, I show up and they're like, hey, you're here, all our problems are solved. And for me, that's probably like, you know, the biggest achievement I have. I've done projects of between 1.5 to $15 million. I've handled projects, I've handled teams, teams that contained experts um, from our OEM webs around the world. 
and we successfully deliver on those projects. And there are lots of them every year. And for me, you know, that's a major achievement. But I think the biggest achievement of all in my 15 years of experience is that, you know, in the past few years, I'm consistently ranked A by our appraisal system. I'm the only female in a department of about 69 men. So when men are getting D, getting Cs, getting Bs, I'm an A. And so I encourage every, every female that, you know, don't shy away from competition. I work, work in a very tough industry. Go out there, be ready to work, be ready to learn, be ready to compete. And if your dream is in STEM, go for it. No matter what people tell you, dreams do come true. And I'm a living witness to that. Thank you. Oh, amazing. Fantastic. Please pass the microphone, sir. Okay. My next question goes to Lebo Gang. <laughs> okay, I read that you have an edtech company called um, Fit Me, and you know, you, okay, you tell us what you do with the company, and I want you to share the challenges and the success you've recorded with that company so far. Um, so Fruity Mall is a company I started in 2013, and. The goal of the company was to actually produce mobile apps. And then I discovered there's a large pool of people that don't know how to code at all. And coding is the new form of literacy. So while we teach people how to read and write and focus on mathematics and all those other STEM-related careers, in this world that we're living in now, there's a, there's a hunger for, for more technological uh, solutions which require the ability to code. So I figured I only learned how to code in university and I thought that is, that is a bit late. So what can I do at grassroots level? So I started reaching out to schools and together with the Department of um, Education I managed to teach uh, kids from as young as seven years old how to code. And it wasn't more for them to produce as many programs as they can, but to show them that they are problem solvers. Because the minute someone believes that they are a problem solver, they stop looking outside for solutions, and they start asking themselves, what can I do to address a certain problem? So, um, so that's one element of it. And then the other element was to actually produce locally relevant um, apps. So I'm from South Africa, and there's a lot of funding for, for young um, entrepreneurs, especially uh, black female entrepreneurs. But in the IT sector, that percentage is very small. So you start with women, and then the minute you create a subset of women and say you want to concentrate on African women in, in tech, the, the percentages are even less than 1%. It's, it's very low. And this morning, when I switched on the TV, um, there was a clip on BBC about uh, females who take up computer science or computer engineering as a career in the UK. And that's only 20%. And out of the 20%, n not a lot go into the industry and practice what they studied. So if, if I could say anything to any of the females sitting here, Yes, you can study a STEM-related career, but be bold enough to also practice it. You know, don't hide away, you know, because it's very hard if people don't see you. If they don't know you sitting there that you're a mechanical engineer because they don't see you at a plant or at, at, at site somewhere, they don't know you exist. And if they don't know you exist, they can't look up to you, they can't emulate you. So in terms of the challenges, it would be skills. Um, there's a large skill shortage, and if you want a gender balance, it becomes even worse. And um, so in my role at MLab, I support startup companies and help them gain funding with angel investors. But out of those teams that I've supported, I don't even have one female founder. So it's very tough. It's very tough. So. I know there are other people here who run their own companies or maybe are part of companies who support young women who are in development or engineering, but I'm going to ask that they don't cook the results because these days it's a KPI to have a woman in your team 
it's a KPI to support a woman-run company, but is it a female who's actually running that company? And how many more are they mentoring? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Good day, everyone. I'm going to call the Lord of Zelf. My name is Chidema Bidu. I want to share my experience. Uh, I work as an engineering ma manager. An engineering company, Flamex is the name. Uh, I start, I first started with Flamex, I did training with Shell. And without training, I was, uh, we were just six females out of the one room with Singapore counterpart. So it was very difficult and we are being looked at as if uh, you know, we can't go further. And before we finished the training, I was able to get a job at Flamex. And uh, it's the first day at work, it was something else because I met a senior colleague who is, is an electrical engineer, but he was not all that friendly. And he was like, ha, where is this uh, woman coming from? And uh, he started asking me some questions, and uh, in the process, I discussed what we did in Shell, and he was like, wow. So you do this, so you can, you, you can work in the field. I said, yes. So I said, I don't need to talk much, but my work will speak for you. I, and then he presented me to my boss, and uh, my boss was like, ah, OK, uh, let me try. And I was like, I talked to you today. Uh, my, if I say anything in the office, it stands. If I'm not in the office, it's as if the office is closed. I was discussing with somebody else and I said, I traveled uh, in July, I went July, I was now in the office, and it, my boss was like, who are you? You need to come back. And I was walking all through there, just because I have proven myself as a female, nobody looked down on me. But initially, it was very, very difficult. In my, uh, let me, in my, when I got married in 2012, I was in Spain in 2012, and I came back and got married. Uh, everything changed. I know we used to have a lot of uh, females that work as volunteers then. I can remember if she, she got married in 2012, we lost her. And I was not happy. I was like, ha, huh, is it when you get married, uh, you will not be with IPV again? I said, no, this will be a challenge for me. And I, have to, I called my husband and I said, this is what I want to do. And this has been my lifestyle. You cannot stop me from pursuing my career. Please, I am begging you. If it's not going to work, I will, you, I'm going to quit now. And luckily, he said, okay, I will support you. And it has been difficult, but at least once in a while, he is there to support. Because when he sees me, when people are calling me, meet me and say, ah, this girl, uh, everything in computer, you know about things in computer, you do your work well, so what is going on? I said, ha, ah, is it my wife that is doing this? Okay. I hands off, I'll be there to support you. So, and uh, uh, I know just recently I still have a lot of uh, challenges. I discussed with somebody else and I said, a lot of the male, uh, my male colleagues, most of them left for a better option because, because of the issues we're having in Nigeria. And I know a lot of companies are coming, you know, things are coming. But my boss called me and said, please, I am begging you. Don't drop. Don't leave me. Be there for me. And uh, I said, okay, no problem. Well, because of the work I've been doing, and just like what I said, my work speaks for me, I've been promoted to a director in the office, not just the manager, but I'm a director now. And uh, he is no longer even, I'm staying in he's no longer in Portacourt, he's in Lagos. He said, Chilima, do the work and pay yourself. And <coughs> The work has been going on. But anytime you see ah, things coming in, you say, ha, you guys are doing something, please keep that money for me. I say, wow, but you said you should go ahead and uh, do a work. So what am I telling our female engineers in particular? Because most times you feel it's difficult. Uh, you cannot do it. Tell yourself, just like what patient said, double your efforts. If you double your efforts, 
you are going to pass surpass me because I said whatever a man can do, a woman will do it better. I believe in that and it has been working for me. Thank you very much. Um, I'll start by asking a question, if you don't mind. By a show of hands, please, how many engineers in this house? E engineers, please show your hands. Okay. How many aliens in this house? Okay, great. Just a few of us. That's one of my challenges. <laughs> I can see, like, about five. So, um, I'm actually an architect. I'm still in school. I'm doing a master's in architecture because of professional reasons. And um, I, sometimes I get asked the question, why do you like energy? Why do you like sustainable energy? Why do you like renewable energy? You're in architecture, you're in the business of design. And I wonder if my colleagues can ask me that question, then what about the people outside? So I'm an architect who's supposed to mainly go for creative stuff design spaces, but I keep leaning towards engineering, you know. So as part of, thank you very much. So as part of challenges, um, that is one of them. Um, as an academician, I can say that um, I want to do research. Funding is an issue. Funding is an issue for almost everybody in Nigeria, except if you're a very good politician or a very bad politician, as the case may be. <laughs> so um, right now I'm seconding at base. I'm actually starting on Monday. So um, my family, I have two girls. They actually live in Kaduna. But um, I used to lecture in Zaria, which means I left my two girls with my mom to be able to work. And then now I'm here in Abuja and I still have to leave them in Kaduna just to be able to work. So that's another challenge for women. I'm sure as men, it's difficult to leave your kids. But what about as a woman? That's very challenging. Um, I think though, as women in STEM, I will see it as a good opportunity because as they said, there are laws that support women in different places, meaning that you probably have a better chance to get a job somewhere simply because the law is on your side. But that takes research, that takes prior knowledge. So um, I think there's a saying, um, opportunity comes, but it needs to find you working. And that's true for anybody, being male or female. Wherever you are, you really need to work hard, put in the effort, so that when the opportunity comes, you're ready to take it. So that goes with um, working opportunities, employment opportunities, any kind of opportunities really, and you need to take risks. Um, the economic situation in Nigeria is such that everybody needs to work, male or female. So um, being a Hausa lady, in addition to being a Nigerian and a sub-Saharan woman, we have many, many challenges and we just can't afford, male and female, you know, we talk about feminism and, um, well, let's assume men have the power, so I'm going to talk to the guys here. The mathematics just don't add up. You cannot say that a woman has to stay at home and not do this and not do that. We just can't afford it anymore. If we take that stance, we all collapse because the women just have to work to be able to afford the schools, the private hospitals, the roads, everybody is his own government basically. We get our own water, we get our own electricity. I'm in renewable energy, so I know that we're going for decentralized energy now. So everybody has to put in panels because we cannot wait for the government to put in the needed infrastructure. So that's a challenge for everybody. When I work, honestly, in my head, I don't care about male or female, to tell you the truth. I don't work as a female, but that's because I'm in academia, and in academia, usually they're females. Yeah, so it's okay there. So, um, so, but let me tell you to the girls now, if I need to be a woman, that's something that my little experience has shown me. Since we do live in a cultural space where men feel patriarchal, sometimes I use it to my advantage, to be honest with you. 
If I need something and I'm a female, I'll go, oh, I'm a female, I can't do it. Do it. I need protection. You need, you know? So, there's wisdom in that. Yeah, so, so, so I kind of tell my friends that, oh, I embrace my womanhood. I embrace my, my, my physical inferiority, you know, all those things. Because I have a goal. I'm not out to fight the world. I don't want to fight anybody. I want to get ahead. So if I'm not nasty, if I'm God-fearing, I'll do it. I'm not going to steal. I'm going to work hard. But if I can use your own prejudice against you, I will. <laughs> so I'll stop there. Thank you very much. All these secrets revealed. <laughs> okay. Yetma, um, I'm very sure there are quite a number of people also that aspire to achieve the kind of successes that you've recorded. Um, in two minutes, please, can you tell us some of the secrets to your success? What and what do you think that the younger generation right here can emulate that will help them you know, achieve success in their different fields? Okay, first and foremost, um, we need to focus on the target. And if you are a team leader, you need to have develop teamwork spirit amongst team members so that you can achieve the target. That's one of the secrets I use wherever I'm in charge. I try to bring everybody to operate at the same frequency. Mm. And also, I believe that human beings are emotional machines. So I try to take care and make sure everybody is happy. I provide a happy environment. Mm. Also, as she said, I don't discriminate when I'm relating with members of my team, whether you're a woman or a man. I give everybody the same information, same motivation, because I know that Women can bring a certain perspective that the men cannot bring. So I need the men and I need the women. So that's another thing. Thank then you. the other one is that by belonging to IEEE and some other professional organizations, I've learned a lot. Learned a lot of things that helped me. IEEE especially, there are a lot of resources on leadership, on soft skills that have helped me over the years to do my work well. Then uh, the office policies I talked about, the positive aspect, learn to sell what you do, learn to sell yourself. Aww. Thank, thank you. you so much, Ma. Thank you, thank you so much, Ma. Please, you can. Um, I wanted to share two things. One being the Clementina Sadua Award. Um, so I don't know how many of you know that Clementina Sadua is actually, was actually Nigerian. And the award is named after her. And it was established 10 years ago. She was the, one of the first women, she was actually the first woman in engineering coordinator for Region 8. And that's something to aspire to, you know. And today, Region 8, whether you're in the Middle East, Europe, or in Africa, we're challenging women to say, if, if your character or your work emulates Clementina Sadua, apply for this award, you know. So, um, Mom Gloria spoke about applying yourself and selling yourself and also being part of professional organizations. You sitting here are already leading. All the women sitting here are already leading. You're getting information that other people are not getting. And the panelists here are asking you now to take the front seat. So um, I just wanted to say thank you, one, for the opportunity, but also to share that we can't do this without the men. If, if I look at my own life, I am who I am because of the guys who took extra time to show me and mentor me. Because it's one thing reading about design patterns and it's another applying them to a project. 
So if you have, let's say, a, ma a guy who has five, ten years experience of software development, they can teach you beyond the textbook. So if we are to have more successful women in engineering or any STEM-related career, we need to work together. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. Please, do we have any questions? I can take one question. Good afternoon, everyone. Our protocol duly observed. I want to thank the panelists for um, exposing some of their challenges, their success stories, for sharing their success stories with us. I must say that I really learned a lot from everything each of them have said and has said. So, but my question, I have a question, and it's not directly to anybody, so any member of the panelists could ask. I believe that at one point or the other, you guys encountered, I mean, you encountered some discouragements and failures. And as young like, as students, female engineers, growing up, we, at times we, we are challenged with some failures. Maybe you're doing something and you have an expectation but you couldn't meet up with the expectation, or at a point you failed, you know, it's very discouraging when you put in so much effort and then what you were expecting is, didn't come true. So you tend to get discouraged. So I want to ask, in the course of your life, I mean, your career path, how have you handled failures? Thank you. Let me attempt um, to answer that. In, in terms of um, professionally, right, I will just, just take you back to the nursery rhyme, try, try, try again. In the first few years, I used to sleep with manuals, options. When I had a problem to solve and I've not solved it two, three, four days, I will take all the manuals to the room. I will sleep, wake up, dreaming about it. The whole idea is don't expect to be a superwoman, right? Take it one step at a time. The people that seem to know it all, they were ones like you. Or someone could have the advantage of maybe they have a higher IQ or something and they could get it faster. But just be true to yourself. The question to ask yourself is, am I in the right, am I in the right field? So don't be in engineering because somebody prompted you to be there. You won't last, okay? But if you're sure this is what I want to do, don't expect to be a superwoman. There was a time, and be truthful, there was a time I went um, to a platform offshore to do a job. And somebody distracted me, asked me to do something else. Said, oh, since you're here, could you help us take a look at this running turbine? The turbine was running. Help us check this and that. Mistakenly, I touched the button and I shut down the whole plant. If you know what one barrel of oil is, you know what it means to shut down a plant. Immediately, all the leadership were calling in, coming. What happened? I said, oh, it was me. And it was a mistake. The funny thing is, I am probably, you know, one of the few people who could actually go through the log and help them identify what shut it down. But I was the first to say, it was me, I shut it down. And I was ready to write all the reports and everything. Don't shy away from failure, okay? Eventually, people begin to respect you for that. And when you fail, like maybe you fail a subject or you set a target and you don't achieve it, put it again for next year. I'm going to do this again and pursue self-development. But when you look back after three, four, five years, you would have become so much better than you were. I tell people, I'm not a runner, I'm a crawler. I keep crawling. You know that poem about, by all means, keep moving? I am that person. I never stop going through, I've never stopped studying, I've never stopped learning. And suddenly somebody looks at you and says, oh, you're so good. It doesn't start like that. Just keep pushing yourself. Thank you. Maybe it's because I want to be a superwoman and a go-getter. I'm a nurse in the midst of engineers. So, <laughs> so yes, I want to be a superwoman. That's why I go everywhere and I, I'm a go-getter. So, but my question is, um, what's your achievement so far? And what is it that you held on to? Because yes, as a woman, there are these challenges that get you a step backward. But then you need to push forth. So what is it that you held on to that? So um, I finished my PhD in 2013. And it was a very difficult period. And I think I'm still recovering three years later. I didn't have any money. It had all gone in pounds sterling. I actually went to Newcastle University. Yeah. 
So, um, but I think that generally, I'm going to talk specifically to Africa and Nigeria as a very cultural set of people. I think one way or the other, we believe in divine God. One way or the other, yes? Yes, all right. So we have something to hold on to. Uh, what I do is I pray, apart from, because I've already spoken about working hard. That's like number one. So if you pray a lot and you work hard, then you have this belief that what you're doing is given the nod by God. So if you get something, it is by God. If you don't get something, it is still by God. But you know you have consulted a higher being, so you are at peace. Now peace, peace where even in your heart, in your country, wherever it is, peace is something that we should aspire to because I'm, I can tell you if you don't have peace, you can only do so much. You can't concentrate, you can't think, you can't give your best. So always search for that peace, whether God, whether yoga, or whatever. So I think that that's something that I hold on to. I don't know if it speaks to you, but yeah, I always consult my higher being. I think uh, I enjoyed your topic, Women in Africa, Challenges and Sources. Um, it is not always all about challenges. I think success is also a key factor for those of us that are men. We all understand that when you constitute a committee, especially when it involves going around looking for money, and you put women there, you must get your money. And when you also constitute a committee that involves working, you also put women there, they will also succeed. And when you ask women to go out and uh, maybe solicit for grant and maybe some other opportunities, it is more open to them than to men. That is the basic truth. Then challenges. For those of us that work in the offices, we have this perception that women, in most cases, they always go after the shortcut, especially those that are up and coming. When they walk up to 12 o'clock, they fall back on the excuse, my children are in school, let me go for school runs. They disappear, they don't come back again. And then they leave the bulk of the work for their male colleagues. For myself that is in academics, you give them some courses to teach, they will tell you, I don't know how to teach it. And then you remind them that in the application letter, this was the area that you said you were an expert in. Why can't you teach that they've gotten the job and they will leave more of the work for us? Now come to my own, the, 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 the most basic challenge of women. They like everything to be carved out for them. That is our belief, and that is the truth. In Nigeria today, there is this 30% affirmative action. The government of the day, whenever they are constituting any board, political or otherwise, they make sure 30% is reserved for women. They will now come to where the women are. Ask them to vote for one of their kind. They will never vote. They are going for position. That is where my question is going to. No woman will want to support another woman, except both of them are already successful. If they are not successful, the one that is trying to succeed will never support the one that wants to succeed above her. The question now is this. Why do women hate themselves so much? Why don't they support themselves? They are actually uh, running out of time. Okay. Okay. I think Professor. No. They, they're interested in that one. They're interested in There's that time. There's time. There's time. There's time. There's time. There's time. Professor, do you want to respond to that? Yes. Or you give uh, Miss Patient? I think that's an impression. It's changing. Yes. Because you heard my story, how I support other women. And all these women have been mentoring and supporting, are supporting other women. So it's like a chain reaction. About women who don't come back to work after school run, they just require counseling and mentoring and finding out how they can be helped. That's how it works. Then uh, I just want to say that uh, Every one of us here, please, let's walk home with the knowledge and fact that for every African country, especially those in the sub-Saharan, for you to meet your socioeconomic targets, 
the sustainable development goals, you need more, more women scientists, engineers, technologists, and also politicians and lawyers for you to meet that target. Because women are more than men. That's a reality. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Prof, for your response. Did she answer your question? Don't worry, we'll have the discussion during the break, but we need to move this program forward. Okay, please. And we is a reputable organization that every female engineer should aspire to be part of. And um, I'd like you to talk more about we, what, what are the benefits and what they stand to gain. In one minute, okay. if you can. Um, so it's an elevator pitch. <laughs> Um, so Women in Engineering is an affinity group and uh, the programs that we have on our website, there are currently five of them and one of them is called Coffee Talks and we even give you a brief description on how to go about it. But in a short version, what I would challenge you is 10 cups of coffee. Basically, you attach a cup of coffee to someone either in an organization, be it your own or externally, um, a woman that you want to meet and uh, learn some things from. So after 10 cups of coffee, you would have met maybe 10 women. And then we also have a SMART program, which is for uh, the acronym SMART. Basically, we're encouraging more uh, affinity groups to create small projects that they can achieve over a short period. And there are now funding that is available that can assist them with that. And then um, there's also the Clementina Sadua Award, which I spoke about. And also this year, as Martin spoke, for the first time, we actually have a whole committee because Region 8 is big. And the role for women in engineering, the coordinator, is too big for just one person. So what Jimna did is that she gave all of us a certain portfolio to focus on. So one of the focus areas is vitality. How can we revitalize the different affinity groups in the different sections? And by the way, men can become part of women in engineering. And we, we really encourage you to do that because the more members there are in the section, the more you can get in terms of funding. And then um, another thing is, oh, and we also have action to industry which is also part of my role. How do, I, how do we get women closer to industry? You know, should it be through mentorship programs? And if so, uh, I need to know how Patience is doing her mentoring, how Mom Gloria is doing her mentoring, how Mom Chishidinu is doing her, mentor her mentoring, because they all have different focus areas. Yeah. And for example, with Amin Amina, um, she's doing architecture, but she's interested in solar energy and renewable energy, which is something globally we need, you know? So maybe there's a woman here who's studying a high current electrical engineering career. This is your opportunity to network with architecture and see where those two meet. So we encourage you to like us on Facebook so that you can keep in touch, but also tell us what you're doing locally so that we can spread it all over. Thank you so much. In conclusion, according to OECD, that's Organization for Economic Coordination and Development. So presently in Africa, we have 52% of the population in Africa actually female. What does that speak to? We have more female than male. And therefore, we cannot continue to lay high do as females and say that we are not going to work, we are not going to be part of the innovation, you know, the driving force for change. We need to come out and work, 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 so that our continent as a whole, you know, will become the dream we've always emphasized. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you to the panelists. Please put your hands together for our panelists. They are examples of successful African women. Thank you so much for coming this afternoon.